Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is a handover of a 2015 Auto Trailer Marla 615. So as we start, we'll walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first. First point you get to is your Truma vent for your water heater. When operating on gas, this cover must come off. When you're not operating on gas, i.e. you're operating on electric or you are um, washing or driving the vehicle, you can have the cover on. And you take the cover off, apply some pressure on the top, put your thumb in the middle and peel it off. I will then put this in the driver's door pocket as you're not going to forget where it is and then when you get into the cab to drive off your site you can put it back on. But when operating on gas the cover must be exposed so it's taken off and exposed like this otherwise the gas builds up and it will fail to light because it's getting no ventilation. Underneath you'll notice a grey pipe, this is your waste water, so this is anything you've put down a plug hole goes into a separate holding tank and on the way out of the site you would go over the motorhome service bay leave it on the side and you can just allow all that water out in the winter it's very important that you drain this down as you don't want it to freeze and crack the tank and this is one of the points you'd want to winterise Coming further back you've got your mains connectivity point so you get your hooker blade lift the collar lift the flap on the van and push in always hook the vehicle up first then the sight and do it in reverse when unhooking the vehicle but when unhooking the vehicle there is a small blue clip in the left hand side you put your thumb on that and press down and unhook the vehicle you've got your, your keys here so this locks the cab and unlocks the cab and then this does the habitation door and all the external lockers so you put your LPG liquid petroleum gas you use the key and then you just push them in you can fit two six kilogram bottles in here and then you've got the straps to strap the bottle in when it's in place so always strap the bottle in once you've got it in place like so to connect the pigtail of the bottle it's a left hand thread with it being gas so opposite threads so left to tighten nip up with a spanner an adjustable wrench or gas spanner and then turn the bottle on and off turn it off when you are traveling and then when you turn it on always press the blue the green button for three seconds to allow it into the vehicle as this is a crash valve sensor and then there's one at the back which you press for three seconds if you were struggling for gas so you don't always have to press this one but press this one every time you open the bottle allow it in check that you're getting gas through your hob first if you're not just come out and press this button and it'll allow it into the vehicle but you don't always have to press that one cassette loo so this is where everything ends up so to get this out you always want to make sure that the blade on the bottom bowl of the toilet is closed in the closed position otherwise if it was open you'll not be able to get the cassette out but I'll show you how to do that from inside but when it is closed you'll be able to lift the orange handle and slide the cassette out the vehicle got some wheels there so you can drag it to your waste disposal site which is normally behind or beside your showering and toilet block take the cover off to expose this end and then press the button at 90 degrees and tip it out once you've tipped it out there's normally a tap there so if you put some water in via the spout put the cap back on and give it a rinse just to give it a clean out and if you're using the liquid form of chemical either the green or the blue a cap full so it's 120 mil capacity on this cap fill it tip it in and it's good to go into the vehicle and be used if you're using the tablet form which are the new form it takes less space in the vehicle they're just like a sachet tablet in a cellophane you put the cassette in empty you'd open the blade on the toilet you'd flush about a pint of fresh water into the cassette and then follow behind with a tablet into here and that'll break up with the water in the tablet and with the liquid but always ask your site which chemical or tablet they prefer you to use so you can have get the blue or the green the green is far more environmentally friendly than the blue liquid or tablet and remember if you are using toilet paper you can either use Fetford motorhome toilet paper or you can use the cheaper toilet paper at the supermarkets as that is thinner and breaks down easily whereas your Cashel, Andrex and other premium brands swell with water and it would block the cassette up Underneath here you've got your fresh water drain off point so if you've taken on contaminated water you have 
coming to the end of the season and you're ready to winterize the vehicle or you're simply just not using it for a while you can just open it up there and that'll drain off your fresh water at the back of the van you've got your high level brake light your reversing camera and your bike rack so you pull the bike rack down wheels through here and then we do advise you putting some lock around the bikes just to keep them secure coming to the passenger side of the vehicle at the back here you've got your fresh water intake so on the other side you've got your outlet this is your intake so when this spins it's locked use your key push in and turn and go hard and then you'll be able to lift it off go and buy yourself a hose pipe a standard hose pipe or one of them collapsible ones will do you'll need some hose pipe ends as it's just a brass tap on most sides so you need the screw on bit and the hose lock and then simply put the flat end of the hose into the vehicle wait until it overflows and spews out this side of the vehicle or until you're happy you've got enough water on board but if you did fill it and it was if you wanted to full tank and you did fill it and it was filling out over the side of the vehicle don't worry if a bit runs out underneath because there's an overflow pipe so don't think you've got a leak you don't it's just with it not taking all that into capacity what it does is it pushes some down the overflow and allows it out underneath the vehicle your door opens with the key so you can lock down go down go up to unlock and you've got your door there with a fly screen and you've got your step switch here which is just on the kitchen cupboard which brings out your electric step fridge vents on a light and then in here you do have some storage so you've got your carb mat and carb carpets and then underneath here you'll notice your leisure battery lives there so you'll have a banger leisure battery in there with a 20 amp fuse and you can access that by just pulling the cover off so that's your main battery fuse there at the passenger door you've got your diesel fill out which opens with the main diesel key main ignition key should I say to open the diesel tyre pressure so 5 bar on the front which is 72.3 psi and 5.5 and bar on the back which is 79.5 psi tool kit is underneath the seat here it's got a jack nip brace and a torn eye in and then underneath the floor you have your main engine battery bonnet release is located on the side of the dashboard and then if we have a quick spy underneath the bonnet to the left you've got all of your fluids so you've got your screen wash your power steering fluid your radiator coolant your brake fluid reservoir your engine oil filler and dipstick for checking your levels your paint cord which is 691 your earth for giving or receiving a jump start and behind the passenger headlight putting your key or a screwdriver into here and lifting this collar up you've got your positive there for your for giving or receiving a jump start weight plate is on here now so as it's had a second conversion as it's not just a chassis anymore it's got a motorhome body on it three and a half ton gross vehicle weight train weight if you were to put a tow bar on and tow with it your train weight so your vehicle and whatever you're towing can't exceed 4750 above the habitation door you've got your main 12 volt control panel so you've got your master switch here which turns on 12 volt if you're not hooked up or if you are hooked up and you're receiving mains 240 volt it will turn on the 240 volt so all your three pin sockets around the vehicle will work and mains appliances will work as well clicking on the leisure battery you can view the leisure battery reading clicking on the vehicle battery you can view the vehicle battery reading but you always want to make sure the blue lights on the leisure battery as this is what is powering the motorhome side and you don't want the vehicle battery to power the motorhome side if you are parked up for a week and you are using the vehicle battery it simply wouldn't last and you'd go to start the engine and it would fail to start 
That's only designed for if you are really struggling for 12 volt when you're well camping and you need to turn it on to the vehicle battery for 10 minutes just to do something very quickly and then you turn it back to the leisure battery. You've got your water pump at the bottom so you turn this on to use all the water appliances, tap, toilet, shower. This pressurises the water through the system otherwise you'll just get whatever's in the lines and it would simply drain out and, and you wouldn't have anything in the tap and then here you've got your water level indicator so you can see you've got half a tank of fresh water on board you've got your order light which operates the light on the outside of the vehicle and to lock the door from inside you just push this chrome catch in and then as soon as you go for the handle it releases and you do have a blackout blind on the habitation door in the kitchen area you do have a fold up tower plug so you can fold that up you've got three sockets which you can turn on and off and then press the button in and they'll collapse back down into the worktop three gas rings so there you go you've got three lit gas rings and one electric hot plate which indicates by the red light at the back but that only works when you're hooked up on mains 240 volt got your grill and below you've got your oven you may want to take your grill pan and oven shelf out when traveling or wrap them up as they can cause a little bit of rattling on the roads and then underneath your water pumps at the back you've got your gas taps to the left hand side so the red gas taps any problems with gas turn the bottle off to be safe these are mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced just to make sure the gas is working the standards and you've got the plug there which is for your electric hot plate so you can unplug the plug or turn the plug off should the hot plate be giving you any problems Cutlery drawer, storage in here, and then above you've got your light for your kitchen lights, and there's a little catch just behind here which you pinch to open all the lockers on the vehicle. So you've got your plates, your cups, and your ball racks, and the overhead locker there. You've also got your microwave in your kitchen area, which is the mains 800 watt, 240 volt microwave. So you've got to be hooked up for this to work as well. So you press eco and wakes the microwave and then you can use it normally. Little stand here if you did want a tele put on here, but you do have one at the front, which I'll show you in a minute. We've got 12 volt TV aerial and two 40 volt sockets. So you can put your kettle and things on here if you wanted to table so it's a freestanding table which just folds up and folds down so you can have that in the front or you can have it outside if it's a nice day and then to operate your Dometic styled fridge so you turn on and off here by just pressing and holding so turn back on then you'll notice you've got three sources so this one is mains 240 volt when hooked up on site or at home pre-chilling gas you would use gas if you're wild camping, so if you're away and you are on a temporary holiday site which is just parked in a field or you are wild camping in Scotland, you'd use gas to keep your shopping cool. And then battery is a feed from the engine when it's running, which all that is designed to do is turn it into a massive cool box and it'll keep the temperature the same as what it was previously set at. So it's got to be pre-chilled beforehand so if you are keeping this at home a couple of days before hook the vehicle up put the fridge on then when you come to go away so the night before go off in the car shopping put your shopping in allow that to chill overnight and then when you are ready to drive off unhook it start the engine turn on the battery and then drive or if you're driving from site to site you just put on the battery and it'll keep your shopping fresh if it's full Temperature, so always 
when pre-chilling started at full and then when you put your shopping in I drop it to three or four because some people say that it does get too cold for the shopping and the shopping can perish with the coldness of the fridge so you put your fridge and your small freezer box when you are finished with it for the season and you're packing it away and you're not using it from about November, December time for a couple of months take everything out, clean it out then if you're on the light, there's a little toggle. If you push it in and slide this forward, these pins pop out. Rest the door against it. It will allow air circulation down the side of the rubber and stop mould and bacteria growing in your fridge. But it's always recommended to leave it open. So to heat the vehicle, you've got two options. This switch controls the 230 volt, so mains current. So it's off on the O. You turn up to 2000, which is the two kilowatt heater. And you've got one to nine as your thermostat. Nine is equivalent to 30 degrees. So 2000, two kilowatts, which you can use on most sites. But if you are using a mains kettle at the same time, or you're using a high voltage appliance, sometimes you can trip the vehicle out. So to avoid tripping the vehicle out, you've got two lower settings. So you've got 500 watt, which is half a kilowatt. Or you've got a thousand watt, which is one kilowatt to heat the vehicle. So you can turn it down if you are using a high voltage appliance or check with your site to see what current they give you through the hookah blade. And that this will, determined what setting you use but most camping and caravan and club sites throughout the UK you can use 2000 which is 2 kilowatts but abroad on, or on smaller CL sites you may have to use a thousand so this is the electric side if you're on your site you've paid your fees for their electric you're obviously not wanting to waste your gas but if you were wild camping you'd use the gas side which is this side here on the front of the fire so you've got one to five so so you push down, look in the pilot hole there, pull the gas through. And then that will light when you hear it roar. And then you'll see through there when it lights. So one to five, five being the hottest temperature, which is equivalent to 30 degrees. And then this side, you've got your fan speed. So on the O, what it does is it convex out the front of the fire on the gas and the electric. To blow it through these, which are the ducts, are located all around the vehicle you've got to either put on a or m a stands for automatic and what it will do is a 12 volt fan will blow it around the van and then when the thermostat picks up that it's hit 30 degrees 20 degrees whatever you've got it set to, it will cut out but on m it's manual so it'll blow around the van and then you've got to then come and turn the temperature down or turn it off if it gets too hot and then you do have a fan setting there at the bottom which will just recirculate it if you did turn it off. One to five is just your fan setting speed. But if you're well camping, if you have it on the oak and convect it out the front, that'll save some life in your leisure battery so you'll get a little bit longer out of that being fully charged as you're not wasting 12 volt power on a fan. It will still get the vehicle warm. But if you are away in the winter and it was very cold and you wanted to give it that boost for 20 minutes, 25 minutes to heat the vehicle, you can have the electric and the gas on together, which will heat the vehicle up far quicker. And then you just turn the gas off and allow the electric to continue to heat the vehicle. <laughs> Above from this, you've got your wardrobe. So in here, you've got your TV aerial. So at the back, you do have your TV booster, so you can boost it on the wheel there, 
And then when it shows red, it means that it's struggling to find a signal. If it shows green, it's got a signal. So what you've got to do is you've got to loosen the nut off, push the aerial up, and then use it to direct the aerial here until it finds a signal. But what I would do is I'd look where the other motorhomes and caravans are pointing on your site and then point your aerial in the same direction and you shouldn't have to mess on too long and you should get a signal. But if the signal is broken, you can boost it on the booster or if it's still broken, you may have to turn it down as it may be too strong. But the green indicates it's got a signal, red it's struggling to find a signal, orange it's got a very low signal and you'd have to adjust the aerial. But when you come to travel off, pull it in, tighten the nut up as you don't want the wind to rip the aerial off the vehicle. So behind the driver's seat, underneath the long bench seat, is where you'll find your boiler. So your boiler holds 10 litres of water at any one time, it holds 10 litres of water in the water container. And it's very important that the water doesn't freeze in the boiler over the winter. So what you need to do is you need to let the water out. And to let the water out, you'd lift this toggle in the up position like so. Leave it stood up in the up position during the time you've got the vehicle in storage. 10 litres of water will come out direct underneath the vehicle. And it's draining the water container off. Should it fail and freeze in the boiler, and you're not winterized the vehicle. It's very expensive to replace one of these and it isn't covered under warranty. So always make sure when you are when it's gonna freeze and you're not using the vehicle, you let the water out. So from about October time to March, you want to make sure this is completely empty of water so it doesn't freeze. You've got your fuse spur here for the electric side to heat the water which is then controlled by the switch on the front. So you've got two switches on the front. So you've got Truma boiler, which is your gas side where your cover needs to come off. You'll notice that you've got 50 degrees at the top of heating your water, which you'd normally shower with, or 70 degrees at the bottom, which you do your dishes with as it's a hotter output. But the cover must come off, otherwise you get the red light, which either means you've run out of gas or you've, the cover's been left on and you need to take the cover off and then just blow through the vent when you take the cover off to eliminate the gas that's trapped in there and it will then, you can come back in and put it back on. But you'll feel when it's on because if you put your hand next to it, you'll feel the heat. And then you've got your Truma Boiler EL so you've got off in the middle, one kilowatt at the top and two kilowatts at the bottom. And like the heating, you can have the hot water on together, gas and electric, if you're really in a desperate need for water. But when winterizing the vehicle, open that, open the fresh and the waste from outside, open all the taps throughout the vehicle, and then remove your shower head from your shower hose and allow your shower hose to lie in your shower tray so no water coils up in there and it all just drains out the vehicle because the vehicle has got plastic tanks and plastic pipes for weight and you don't want these to freeze as it's a very expensive cost to repair the damage caused so you've got one fuse spur there for your ultra store which is your electric side of heating your water and you've got one switch there for your ultra heat, which is the electric side, which then controls that switch, switch up there. So make sure if you're loading things in here, you haven't knocked those off. So to make the beds, simply pull and slide out in the middle, the two, and then put your backrests in the middle there. Like so. And there you have a large bed. It's bigger than a double bed, it's more like a king size large bed. I'd also advise you turning these two upside down as well as you get the flatter surface to sleep on then you can put your fitted sheets and your duvets on there and make it far more comfortable to sleep on. In the washroom area you've got your large shower cubicle so make sure that the shower screen is turned back by the turnbuckle when travelling stops it 
for moving about and making some noise when you're on the road. You've got a hanging rail there for wet towels but also doubles up for wet coats or if you're going away on a longer trip and you're not using your shower because a lot of people don't use the showers they use the side showers so they'll hang more clothes in here and use it as a separate wardrobe and like I said if you take your shower head off your shower hose as you can see it's got quite a loop in there leave the mixer tap open and leave that line in the tray any water will just drain out through the plug and the waste would be open anyway light here and then you've got toiletry cabinet frosted window which just opens like so like all the windows and then you'd turn you'd release these push it out and then just turn the black wheels on the window to keep the window out if you wanted fresh air to operate the toilet, make sure the pump's on as it gets a fresh water flush from the main tank. So press the blue button at the back. The fan will kick in, which is just 12 volt assisted fan for ventilation. If you just press that until it goes to a static light, it stops the fan from making a noise. Press the blue button is your flush. So you get your flush there. So always flush the toilet first. Then open the blade, which is this one here, which is slide to the right. Opens the blade, use the toilet with it open, then flush and then slide it back to the left, which isolates the blade and then you can get the cassette out the outside of the vehicle should it be full. But doing that first helps the, the seal on the blade from not getting perished and stuck and it makes sure that everything goes down into the cassette and nothing leaks around it. And then you do have a light here which indicates that the cassette is alright. When it gets a couple of lights it means it's full and it's ready to change the cassette. Above you've got a skylight. So to open the skylight you press it in, slide it up. So we can put in the groove should it be a nice day and you want a nice bit of ventilation. But if it's windy or you're travelling always make sure it's shut. Which is where the bar is above the button. And then you do have a skylight, a side screen on the skylight, and a black help line. Above the driver's seat in the locker is where you'll find your AC500 power supply unit. So to this side you've got your RCD and MCBs for your 240 volt appliances around the vehicle. And on this side you've got all your 12 volt fuses which are listed below. So it would be a good idea to carry some spare blade fuses with you just in case one does blow you can replenish the fuse. You'll also notice that every auto drill has a unique build number so if you ever need parts if you quote your dealer that number they'll then be able to log on to the auto drill system and find the part that's right for your auto drill. So to operate your Avtex telly that is above the cab so it drops down Turn the turnbuckle, comes down. If it wasn't coming down, you can put your hand around the back and pull this pin, which just allows it to drop down. You've got a master switch here, so you can turn it on and off. And then using the remote, you point it to the top left hand corner. Wait until it goes blue, which means it's on. Telly comes on, you've got source, so you can it's digital telly, but if you fit a satellite, this telly is satellite ready, or you can change to DVD, which is just in the side here. But every time you go from site to site, you will have to retune the telly as it will be picking up different airwaves and digital signals. So you press AQT, which is this orange button, so just press and hold, keep your finger down on it. I'll ask you which country you're in, so to me, automatically set to the UK, just press OK. It'll do a search, find as many channels as it can, and then it'll ask you, just press OK, it'll set your regions and so on, through the signal that's picked up, and then it's good to go. But remember, AQT, every time you move from site to site, as it'll be picking up different signals. 
if you really struggle for a signal such as in the lakes you can use DVD and DVD is just in the side here to turn the cab seats round there's two little buttons so there's a lever there and a lever there so just pull the lever out and pull it round if it was to get stuck just readjust the driving position by pulling the seat forward or back and there you've got two added seats in the back of the vehicle so now in the cab to the right of the driver you do have your handbrake which is just here and then on the doors you've got Remus car blind so you pinch and slide and this blacks out the driver's door and the passenger door and then to do the windscreen you've got exactly the same so pinch and slide in the middle and that would black out the windscreen on an evening you've got your electric windows driver and passenger and then mirror adjustment so you've got two mirrors to adjust on each side the top and the blind spot so you can adjust through here by choosing which mirror you want and then you've got your fog lights and your headlight adjustment trip computer on the end of your wiper stalk so that goes through your range your instant average consumption your traveling times your distance traveled and so on and then to reset you just press and hold steering wheel controls on the front of the steering wheel lights and indicators and then at the bottom you've got cruise control get you get up to your desired speed and push up Pushing up will accelerate, pushing down will slow it down. You can cancel with a foot brake or on the end of the stalk, which will turn off the cruise control. And then to resume, you can just press again and it will resume to the last speed set by the cruise control before the engine was turned off. And then at the bottom, you do have speed limiter. So if you wanted to limit yourself as you were in a camera zone, go up slowly goes up in ones, push and hold goes up in fives and then if you feather the throttle you'll have the speed limiter if you push it right the way down it has the kick down function so it will override the speed limiter for safety reasons rear view cameras on all the time so as you can see we're sat in neutral and that's on but it also works when in reverse so to reverse you just lift the collar and it'll come on in reverse You've got traction control ignore this button this is more of an automatic hill descent control no good on a manual doesn't work it's for autos hazards locks the cab on an evening and then you would manually lock the lockers and the habitation door heated mirrors 240 or should I say 12 volt socket there and a 12 volt USB for charging you've got a USB here and an auxiliary 3.5 milli jack with cup holders temperature on the outside ring on the left fan speed on the in must be on at least fan speed one or more for the air to work which is this button here and on the right hand side you have on the outside ring the distri distribution so whether you want it to do the face, feet or screen and whether on the bottom you've got it whether you're recirculating there or you're bringing fresh air in to work the radio so it's fm am you press one to six to save your favorite channels you've got media which is off those sources there so usb or auxiliary jack and then to connect your phone you go phone connect phone okay add a phone you want to find you connect on your device make sure the pins match and then you can pair on your phone and then it'll ask you if you want to download your contacts just press allow and it will save all your phone book into here so you can go through your phone book and call who you want glove box and then a heated and cooled glove box by the air conditioning on the top there yeah.